today we're going to really focus specifically on men's health but all of these tips that i'm giving you is all about how to sustain health and fitness nutrition uh, in a way that you can actually repeat it throughout your life not just doing like a quick fix for two or three months this is actually all actionable advice that works for me my clients and uh, basically every established trainer kind of talks about these principles as well so just quickly about myself, uh, if you want to connect with me on Instagram, I'm at Connor O'Shea Fit. There's lots of free content, free mobility routines there if you want to check them out. Also, ConorO'SheaFitness.com with the website. Um, I've been coaching since 2011, and my main focus is on longevity, sustainability, and physical autonomy. So physical autonomy is basically training in a way that allows your body to do all the things that you want it to do. OK, so a lot of the fitness industry is very much geared towards aesthetics and how you look and bodybuilding. And um, the way I coach people is around how your body functions. So if you're someone who wants to be fit and healthy, be able to go hiking at the weekends, go traveling into your 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, keep up with your kids, have the energy to you know work all day, enjoy the evenings and just really live your life um, optimally. That's what physical autonomy does for you. So your workouts are actually going to fuel your body, not feel exhausted and, and punished every time you train. OK. Um, so what we're going to be covering is men's health 101. So first thing is the top two mistakes I see men make generally when they come into a fitness program or try and jump in with exercise. The second one is like the best exercises for men for optimal health. Uh, the third one is how to create a nutrition plan you can actually follow. And then finally, how to integrate this into your life long term. Because I talked to so many people that they got results for two or three months. But then six months later, they're back to where they started or they're even worse off. They've gained weight. They're, they're injured and so on and so forth. So if what you're doing isn't repeatable, it's a waste of time for you and everyone else. So everything that we're going to talk about today is repeatable practices that actually will get you results over the long term. So uh, the top two mistakes generally I see guys make, and to be honest, this is across the board, men, women, everyone, is number one, the all or nothing mindset. OK, so you're either on this, you know, extreme diet and, uh, you know, high intensity workout or you're doing nothing. And a lot of the times as well with this, it's like, well, if it's not really hard, what's the point? Because I'm not going to get results. And this is a very easy trap to fall into, but you actually want things to be easy. That's the really funny thing, because when it's easy, you'll repeat it. When you repeat it, you'll be consistent. When you're consistent, you get results. OK, uh, so the, the principles we're going to be talking about to overcome this is don't miss twice how to scale your workouts and the RPE scale, the rate of perceived exertion. OK, so I'm going to explain what all those things mean in a few minutes. Then the second thing is. Uh, not being able to properly manage your time or your energy. So uh, actually put it into the chat if you struggle with energy levels like you're tired or if you feel like you never have enough time in the day. And I'm guessing everyone's going to say yes to both of those things. OK, um, so what we focus on with clients and what I'm going to touch on with you guys today as well is how can we actually get back our time so we can actually fit in the important things like your training <clears throat> and how you can improve your energy levels. And that way, then it's going to be much easier to succeed. If you're tired and stressed and time poor all the time, fitness is just another thing on the list of things that just doesn't get done. And you're going to be in that constant state of overwhelm. OK, so we're going to touch on how to plan your week so you actually fit the stuff in that's important to you, that you actually want to do. And then also better boundaries around uh, your evenings and your sleep uh, so you actually have the energy to do everything you want to do on a weekly basis as well okay so how to avoid the all or nothing approach again this is the number one trap that I see uh, people make when it comes to training and fitness you've probably all experienced it I know I've experienced it I go on off sugar or I go off some some food or I say I'm going to train every day <clears throat> And I may maybe do it for two weeks, maybe three weeks, maybe a month. But then eventually I miss a day. Uh, so what generally happens when you miss a day, when you say you're going to do it every single day, is you feel that you failed. And then let's just say you're doing well Monday to Thursday. Friday's busy. It's the end of the week. You're stressed. And all of a sudden the office, they bring in 
donuts and you crack you have two donuts now all of a sudden you feel like you're a failure maybe you have a third donut then you're like well screw it i'll get a takeaway tonight then you wake up tomorrow saturday well it's the weekend now so i'm just gonna you know i'll, I'll get started again on monday saturday you go over the top sunday you're you're feeling guilty ashamed of the decisions that you made and then when it comes to monday you're like well i've wrecked everything so what's the point anyway and then that downward spiral will go on for weeks and even months and for some people unfortunately for years until you restart again and when you restart again you realize you've wasted so much time you need to do an even stricter more extreme diet a crazier workout plan to make up for all that lost time okay so this is the kind of cycle that people get stuck in it never works out for people and never miss twice helps you get around this so it's very very simple you're not going to be ever 100 percent compliant it's impossible no one's perfect you're not perfect either so stop setting the bar so high for yourself because when you set the bar here you're only going to fail so don't miss twice basically means if you do mess up on a friday you just start again your next opportunity so that might be your next meal or the next day if the whole weekend's a write-off start again on monday and you just want to forgive yourself as quickly as possible to get back on the wagon because it's never a meal or a weekend that ruins your results it's your inability to forgive yourself that ruins your results that leads to one day to a week to a month to a year of of uh, not being able to get back onto your onto track okay so never miss twice you miss a meal you miss a workout the next opportunity you get back on the wagon so really just remember that principle from a mindset standpoint that's going to allow you to stay consistent with everything going forwards okay the second one is how to scale your workouts so again you're not always going to have a lot of time in fact you might be very very time poor all the time but let's just say for a lot of people like this is a scale of one to ten on how much movement and training you can do on a weekly basis so like on the 10 this is like someone in the military or like they're like a fitness model or something okay uh, their job is to be physically active no one's really going to be at that level um most people are going to be somewhere at like a four to like a seven generally the people i work with and most people kind of regular people regular jobs okay so let's just say on average 70 80 percent of the time you have the capacity to work out three times a week and you have a dog so you take it for a walk for 20 minutes daily okay and that's generally you're able to do that most times but the trap that you get stuck in is when life gets busy you go from doing that to doing nothing okay so then all of a sudden you might be in a good routine for a few months then life happens and you stop completely and you you keep losing momentum and you're spending a huge amount of bandwidth trying to rebuild habits and this adjusting the dial is all about maintaining your consistent habits and routines regardless of how busy you get so i want you to imagine that you just need to adjust the dial up or down depending on how much time you've available so 80 percent of the time when life is pretty consistent you're doing like a five or a six intensity normally in the past you'd go to zero and then you have to restart and it's difficult to get your momentum but now instead of that you you adjust the dial way down so you might do a one or a two out of ten instead of a zero okay so you're really really busy life is crazy you can still park further away from the office or from done stores or wherever you go shopping you can always take the stairs instead of the elevator so you can just build movement into your day and the trap to avoid here is like well what's the point doing anything if i don't have time to do a proper workout you want to avoid that because you're not trying to do an optimal workout here you're trying to sustain the habit of exercising every week regardless of how busy you are okay so it's a really important concept a lot of the times it's like well if i can't do an hour what's the point okay the point is you want to keep you don't want to break the chain of consistently showing up every week that's the magic and that's how you get the compounding returns of exercise it's like if you're investing in the stock market and every three months you take all your money out and then you plow it back in six months later you're never going to get the compounding returns okay you want to keep just putting in money every week all right same with your fitness um when it comes to intensity level in particular this is something that men tend to push themselves too hard and hurt themselves um because a lot of the times we might think that we're still like 18 or 20 when really we're 40 we're 50 
and we mightn't have done a lot in the last 10, 15 years, okay? So we want to think about the frequency and the intensity of our workouts. And first of all, when it comes to your routines and workouts, you want to set a weekly minimum with your training, okay? So again, when you're feeling motivated, which might be in January, or you might be feeling motivated now, that motivation is going to wane over time. So you don't want to start with like how motivated you feel. You want to start with what you feel you can do even when you're having the worst week ever. Okay. And that's your, that's your floor that you want to commit to on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. And that way, then when you're starting with your floor, you can only go up versus starting with five days a week. The minute you miss five days, you feel like you failed and you might quit completely. But if you set your floor at like two days for like 15 minutes, then every week is a win and it's a success. So a lot, a lot of this stuff is just tricking yourself psychologically into doing stuff and feeling like you're not actually failing. So an example of frequency would be, let's just say two to three workouts a week for 15 to, to 60 minutes. Uh, and then you might walk for 15 to 90 minutes a day. A really nice tip for walking as well is just like as a habit, you might eat three times a day. So after every meal, go for a 10 minute walk. That might be the, the how you build walking into your day. You're always, you're going to eat every day. And this is great for digestion. And it's a great cue. I finished my meal. I'm going to set a five minute timer. I'm just going to leave the house. Once the five minutes is up, I'm going to walk back. Really simple. And 10 minutes is about a thousand steps. So you're going to build three to 5,000 steps extra into your day by just doing that simple habit. Okay. When it comes to training, a lot of, you know, a lot of the kind of bodybuilding information on the internet is about going to failure and like pushing yourself and building muscles and everything like that and the research though shows that shows that that is true but the problem is when you go to failure your form breaks down your injury risk goes up and your ability to stay compliant and consistent goes way down so instead of going to failure and hurting yourself every eight weeks and taking two or three months off focus on leaving two or three reps in the tank okay and this is based on the rating of perceived exertion if a 10 out of 10 is like the maximal weight you can lift or the maximal intensity of the movement you can do before technical failure you want to work at about a seven or an eight out of ten so you could have done maybe two or three more reps but you stop and that's the end of your work okay then you might rest for one to two minutes and you repeat that for however many sets you're doing in your exercise routine so again everything that i'm talking about today is making things repeatable. You want to train and exercise to make your life better. You don't want to be hobbling around every day, having sore hips, having a sore back because of your workout. You want your workout to make you feel better, to feel like you're offsetting all the sitting that you're doing and all the negative positions you're spending your entire life in, okay? Um, next, we're gonna talk about managing your time and energy. So the biggest thing we wanna focus on, we talked about kind of setting your, your hell week uh, like what you can do on your worst week ever. Generally, that's about two 15-minute sessions. And then the next thing we want to do is actually schedule your workouts like appointments. So like if you've got kids or if you have, you know, work, it's in the calendar, all of these things. That's how you organize your life, most likely. You've written it down somewhere. Most likely it's in Google Calendar or something like that. So you want to do the same thing with your actual workouts. So it's like when you're, if you're playing, you know, Gaelic games or going to, violin lessons it wasn't at like monday one week and wednesday the next week and saturday the following week it was like monday and wednesday at the same time every single week that's what time training's on it so you want to think about that yourself as well ideally mornings tend to work better because there's less problems and meetings and you know social events on generally monday wednesday friday <laughs> at like a seven or an eight a.m depending on your schedule or like a tuesday thursday at the same time and just locking that into your calendar as your like your time to train and fill up your own tank and put on your own action mass first each week now the reason this is really valuable as well is if you have it in the calendar sometimes you'll just forget but you'll actually catch yourself because you'll see it in the calendar and you're like okay today's wednesday i completely blanked on the workout today so i'm just going to pull the 7 a.m workout to thursday morning instead and i can just fit it in there and you'll just see like over the course of the year, you will start showing up way more consistently with your workouts simply because it's in the schedule. It's in the calendar. 
you've prioritized it and it's going to get done. Uh, when it comes to recovery and sleep, sleep hygiene is massive. I've, I've had so many conversations with people recently where their notifications are on for social media and email and their phone is in their room. So they're getting pinged in the middle of the night. So like, if that's you and you have low energy and you're tired all the time, like you should be, okay? Because you're getting waken up throughout the night. So the easiest thing is get your phone out of your room. If you don't want to be on your phone, get it out of your room because technology is designed for you to use it and to be addicted to it. So if your phone is beside your bed, it's going to steal all your energy and it's going to keep you up at night, um, especially if you're scrolling uh, on you know, Instagram or TikTok or anything. It's very, very hard to calm down your nervous system after being so highly stimulated. So this little 10, 3, 2, 1 formula works really well. 10 hours before bed, no caffeine. Three hours before bed, no food or alcohol. Two hours before bed, no work. One hour before bed, no screen time. And then zero is the amount of times you snooze in the morning. Now, for some of you, like an hour before bed without screens might be difficult at the start if you're used to kind of just watching Netflix and going to bed or like uh, being on social media. So you can scale this stuff up and down as well. You might start with, okay, instead of an hour every night, I might start with uh, 15 minutes, four or five evenings a week, I'm going to go off screens. And then you start building it up to 30 minutes, 45 minutes and 60 minutes. Um, and then eventually it'll just become natural and a part of your, your lifestyle, okay? Uh, guys, just when it comes to your exercise routine, you want to think about what how you're spending your day, okay? So you're spending your day sitting, most likely. When you sit a lot, your your chest gets tight, your upper back gets weak. Also, your core gets weak, your hips, your front of your hips get tight, and your glutes get weak as well. So you want to focus on offsetting those issues and having a program that's going to basically strengthen the backside of your body because that gets weak and atrophies and open up the front of your body, which gets tight and restricted from, you know, we're in this position over a desk, we're on our phone, closed and tightening, okay? So the kind of most tonic program you can focus on is something that's going to strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings, like a glute bridge or a deadlift, uh, something that's going to focus on strengthening the upper back, so W slides or a dumbbell row, and then something that's going to stretch the up, uh, sorry, the front of the hips, like a hip flexor stretch, and then a dead bug for the core, okay? And this is just a really simple, like, beginner's program. And along with opportunities to move, which is basically getting, you know, any opportunity you have to move and get out of your desk is going to be really powerful as well. Because if you're not sitting, you're standing. And if, if you're standing, you're not going to tighten up as much from being in these compromised positions every day. So just, like, what these movements look like. This is the dead bug here. Uh, which works on the core. This is the glute bridge here, which works on the glutes. Uh, w slide works on the shoulders, the backside of the body, and then the hip flexors works on the front of the hips that gets very tight from sitting, okay? So it's a really simple body weight program you can do from home. Um, the last thing we're going to touch on, guys, is nutrition. So just again, to zoom out, nutrition is so confusing. It's a very polarizing topic. It's like the new religion, a lot of people say. People get very, very triggered by um, nutrition for whatever reason. So I don't talk about anything to do with like a specific diet. I talk about specific principles. And basically, I talk about the three lever approach. So you've got C or calorie restriction, how many calories you eat on a daily basis, time restriction, restricting the time in which you allow yourself to eat, and dietary restriction, restricting what you eat. And the rule is, you want to always pull one of these levers. Sometimes you pull two, and then a few times a year, you'll pull all three. So calorie restriction will be like calorie counting. It works really well for some people. For some people, it causes stress. So it's all of this is population dependent. What's going to work best for you? Time restriction or intermittent fasting works very well for men in particular. A lot of women, I find, don't work as well with the fasting. Okay, and... To do time restriction, the easiest one is you just skip your breakfast and you eat your lunch and dinner. A very easy way to manage the calorie intake into your day. And then dietary restriction would be you might eliminate part of your diet. You might cut out sugar, cut out gluten, cut out dairy, cut out alcohol. All of a sudden, you're eliminating calories. So doing one of these options is a great way of managing uh, the food intake and the calorie intake. 
if you're not thinking about any of these, most likely you're going to have weight issues going forwards. And this is a really good way of thinking about it coming into the holiday season. So at social events, doing a time restriction, you might fast the evening before an event. If you know that you're going to be eating a lot at that event or drinking or the morning of and the day after. Okay. Calorie restriction would be you might skip the starter or the dessert, go for a lower calorie alcohol option. And then dietary restriction is you might avoid the dairy, the sugar, or the wheat or liquid calories from the options at like a Christmas party or something like that, or at a wedding. So you can pick one of those levers to pull when you are like socializing over the Christmas period to help manage and mitigate calorie intake. So that's everything, guys. Uh, quick recap, scaling the workouts, adjust your dial, plan your hell week. So set your lowest commitment and focus on going from there. 10, 3, 2, 1 formula for sleep. From a strength and flexibility standpoint, just strengthen the backside of the body, stretch the front, put it in the calendar if you want it to get done and always focus on pulling one lever for nutrition. So that is everything, guys. If you want to, again, connect on Instagram. And if you want um, five days of free mobility coaching, just shoot me uh, this DM as well, and I can set you up with that. But Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.